blessings and welcome to God's house. It's going to be different today. God's house here in Green Leaf Leafton is basically empty because of the coronavirus of God's house for you now today can very well be your home. Might be in a car if you're traveling. For some of you I know who listen to us, whether it's out of Cresco or KFIL out of Preston, those of you who might be watching, whether it's out of Spring Valley, Chatfield, Harmony, and in the near future, we pray, maybe in a couple of weeks, streamlining at this very hour, we're grateful that you might be listening to in your barn. Some of you might be doing chores around the house or even on the farm. So wherever God's house is on this day, might you, as Joshua would be commanded by God in Joshua 1.9, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord our God is with you wherever you go. My week has been also different, just like many of your weeks. Some of us uh, aren't working the hours we once did. Some of you perhaps are even at home, having been laid off. For me, preaching to an empty church is sometimes part of my routine. I do that every Saturday morning. Saturday evenings, I read over my notes. Sunday morning, early, before church again, I preach to an empty church. So that's routine. This morning, this is anything but routine to be preaching a third time to basically an empty church other than the guys doing the sound and the video for you this morning. So we, this day, offer it to God. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're in Lent right now, and this song speaks of that. The wondrous cross which Christ died for us. When I survey. Okay. Uh -huh. 
join me in prayer? Father, what amazing love that you would love us so much that you willingly would die. You would give up your life. Uh, what other king, Lord? What other king would leave their throne and, and then come down to earth to live and to reign and to walk with us, to grieve with us, to cry with us, to know, Lord, when we're hurting, and then to know that you hurt so much on that cross, giving your life for us, that we might have it all, and all that you would ask, Lord, that would, what you would ask is that we would give you our all in return, and Father, because of sin, we fall so short of that. So, Father, I'm sorry for my sin. As your people, Lord, we try to be more like you. We're like the disciples who would ask you, Lord, teach us to pray. And you would say, pray like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Normally, this is when we, as a congregation, would be standing. We would be greeting one another. We'd be shaking hands. We'd be giving hugs. Uh, of course, right now, social distancing would stay six feet apart. <coughs> That's hard to do, isn't it? So if you're at home with loved ones today, share your love. Share the love of Christ that uh, soon... I pray soon we'll be together again. And this is my prayer. Let's go before the Lord. Uh, it is in times like this when we're so afraid. Again, we watch the news. Uh, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for our, our health care workers, our emergency responders, all of those who are trying so hard to help us in this time of need. But ultimately, ultimately, we need God's hand. We need God to intervene. So let's pray. Lord, this week, uh, when I watch the news, I can begin to just feel so desperate, so fearful in many ways, Lord. The unknown, I guess, probably what gets most of us. How long, Lord, will this go on? How long will maybe some of us be without work? How long will this last, Lord, when our needs aren't fully met like they once were? Our grocery stores aren't stocked like they once were. Those things that we would take for granted, Lord, are suddenly changed. So, yeah, I can be fearful. But then I'm reminded, Lord, today, it's your word that brought me back even as a pastor to say, be strong and courageous like the Lord told Joshua. Don't be afraid. I'm with you, and I will go before you. So, Lord, we first of all today acknowledge your name. What a wonderful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. Because it's in your name, Lord, that we have life, we have breath. It's in your name, Lord, that we have strength. It's only through you, Father, that we can have even courage. And yet our courage is so small, at least mine is. Lord, I just want to be stronger. My faith, my faith has been challenged recently, probably 
more than uh, I can remember for quite some time, for many a year. And that might be the same for many of us. This is uncharted territory for us, Lord. This talk about quarantine and, and separated and then loss of work and with so many. Loss of life, Lord, for families that are grieving and hurting, that have lost loved ones through this time, whether through some of, I understand, even our military, Lord. But then our doctors and our nurses and those who are trying their hardest, Lord, to protect and trying hard to help those who are struggling getting their breath. So thank you, Lord, for our doctors, our nurses, our, our medical personnel, our first responders, again, those who are seeking to walk alongside of us, our businesses that are still able to remain open and trying to help meet our needs. So with that, Lord, uh, teach us. Teach us to number our days that, that we may gain a heart of wisdom, that we, Lord, might uh, not take this day for granted, but also to live somehow, Lord, in peace. A peace that, yes, for us, for me, would say, Lord, end this quickly. Then I can have peace. Or, or Lord, bring, bring back our jobs. Then we can have peace. Bring it, bring it back that norm, Lord, that we're so used to. Then we can have peace. I know that will come in time, Lord. It will come in your time. But peace also comes knowing that uh, you are in control. And I want to give you, Lord, control of my life. Because Satan is here. He wants to control me instead. He wants me to live in fear, and I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there anymore. Lord, I want to live in you. So be with us, Lord, through this time. Be with our nation. Be with our government leaders who are trying to make the, the decisions, Lord. And I pray that those decisions they made are, are made uh, based on you, that you're speaking. So help us to be patient, to be loving, to serve you, to serve one another, Lord, in our communities close by and those who ever might need a helping hand even in this difficult time. So thank you, Lord, for your word, which is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And all God's people said, amen. Our song of preparation this morning, going on that theme of the cross, and our song is, I will sing the wondrous story. I will sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me, how he left his home in glory for the cross of Calvary. Yes, I'll sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. Sing it with the saints in glory gathered by the crystal sea. I was lost, but Jesus found me, found the sheep that went astray. Through his loving arms around me, draw me back unto his way. Yes, I'll sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. Sing it with the saints in glory gathered by the crystal sea. Days of darkness still come on me. Sorrows past I often tread. But the Savior still is with me by his hand. I'm safely led. 
Yes, I'll sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. Sing it with the saints in glory gathered by the crystal sea. He will keep me till the river rolls as waters at my feet. Then he'll pair me safely over where the loved ones I shall meet. Yes, I'll sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. Sing it with the saints in glory gathered by the crystal sea. Blessings. Normally at this time, we'd either have Ed up here, we'd have all of our children, we'd have Joni, perhaps even Becca, and the steps are empty this morning. So in this time, if you're listening at home, make this a time for your children as well. Teach them God's story, God's stories of faithfulness, God's stories of love and devotion. And love your children. Thank you, Lord, for our children. And we just pray for their protection. Ed would finish up, Becca would finish up, Joni would finish up singing and saying to the kids, God loves you and so do all these people. And our kids would say, hallelujah, amen. I'm changing up direction to Lent. Actually, since the beginning of January, we have been looking at Peter's life, his walk with the Lord, his calling. With that, with the circumstances that are, are going on, at least for the next couple of weeks, I'm changing direction and turning to God's Word in the Psalms. Particularly today, and I was reminded of this psalm even this past week, Psalm 121. And next week we'll look at Psalm 23, perhaps even going on to Psalm 91 the week after. Looking at these psalms that remind us of whose we are, who we belong to, and who this God is. Psalm 121. I look up to the mountains. Does my help come from there? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let you stumble. The one who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel never slumbers or sleeps. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon at night. The Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go, both now and forevermore. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I need this psalm this week. As I was studying it, Lord, I was reminded that you do watch over me, my coming and our going. So, Father, on this day, protect all of us. Protect us physically, but even more so, protect us spiritually. And we pray this in Christ Jesus' name. This psalm is particularly called by many people the traveler's psalm. 
And I don't know about you, maybe you're a seasoned traveler. Maybe you find yourself gone even uh, quite a bit of the time for work. Maybe you love to just be gone as a family on vacation. I find myself not being a very good traveler. I'm what you would call kind of a homebody. In fact, Brenda would say often, I know I've told you this before, she says, I need to get Roger on an airplane because if we're driving someplace after two days, he's going to turn around and he's going to want to come back home. And that's just who I am. So I'm not a very good traveler, but this psalm, this psalm is often referred to as the traveler psalm for some of those who are going on vacation, who are leaving home, who, who knows where the situation might leave them. So today, this seems like a psalm that at least speaks to my heart, and I pray it speaks to yours. The subheading in our pew Bible here, and this is the New Living Testament, is states a song for pilgrims ascending to Jerusalem. So it's believed at least that Israel, the Jews, when they were going to Jerusalem, maybe heading even up to the temple, might use this song. They would have had this recited. They would have had this down in their memory. And they would have been singing it, perhaps, on their way, like going to church. Much like we would maybe listen to the radio and sing a, a hymn or a praise song on our way to church. We don't know who the writer of this psalm is. Many of our psalms might state it's a psalm of David or a psalm of Asaph. This one doesn't give us that much of a clue. We too don't know anything about where this writer of the psalm is in their particular life. Are they traveling? Are they away on a journey? Are they in a position that just is leaving them feeling helpless? Are they on their way to Jerusalem? The psalm writer starts off, I look up to the mountains. Does my help come from there? So, wherever this psalmist is, they're in a position, at least they're outside, and they're gazing. They're, they're gazing to the mountains. Is that where their help comes from? Now, if he felt vulnerable, perhaps, maybe, maybe that's where he thought that could be his place of safety. One writer this week said, if the mountains provided a place of safety, also, too, the mountains provide a place for thieves and robbers. So, I don't really believe that the psalmist is really thinking physically that the mountains are a place of safety in that regard. More people, more writers believe that when he gazes to the mountains, he's looking up to Jerusalem, which is probably accurate. We don't know. When I look to the hill, there that temple would be. There it would be gleaming in all its glory reminding, reminding of Israel, reminding of these pilgrims going up, this psalmist that where the temple is, that's where God's presence is. So it could very likely be that that's what he means when he lifts his eyes to the hill. Some could read into this that he's in a desperate situation right now. He's feeling anxious. He's feeling lost, kind of like we are today. But it's pretty obvious, too, that I don't think this psalmist is feeling all that anxious. I don't think he's feeling lost at all. In fact, it's pretty evident because there's hardly a break here. I don't think the psalmist is saying, I look to the hills, does my help come from there? And he's waiting for a response. I think it's more like, I lift my eyes to the hills from where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord maker of heaven and earth. I don't think there's a hiccup in between. I don't think there's a big draw of breath like a, a gasp, like waiting for an answer. I think he's not waiting for an answer from God. He knows the answer. And he states it very quickly. My help comes from the Lord. 
In fact, he's the one who made heaven and earth. So as we break this psalm down today, it kind of builds, kind of builds throughout. It begins recognizing who this God is. He's the God who made heaven and earth going all the way back to Genesis chapter 1. He's the God that is in control. He's the God that started it, and he's not a God that stands off now and says, well, I'll just let it go as it can. It'll be fine on its own. No. The psalmist recognizes God as the one who is still in control. So if somebody's in control of something, if I feel like I'm in control of a situation, that gives me calmness. There's this stability, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. The psalmist would write, God is my stability. Other psalms would say, he is my fortress. He is my God in whom I trust. So with this Lord, there's this stability, this God who I trust. The hills offer protection. This God offers protection. It is indeed he who watches over Israel will need not let you slip. In fact, he, he will not let you stumble, our Bible verse reads. The one who watches over you will not slumber. I struggle with that a little bit. Okay, the psalmist says God won't let you stumble. Does that mean I'll, I'll never fall? Does that mean if I have children and when our children were trying to learn how to ride bike when they were young, does that mean they're never going to tip over? They're not going to fall down and scrape their knees? They're never going to need stitches? They're never going to be in the emergency room? Is that what he means when he says you're never going to stumble? I'm not so sure that's what the psalmist means. What he means is that this God who is with us, he allows us to go through life and there are times when we are going to get hurt. But like any loving parent, anyone who loves their family, they're going to be right there to pick them up again. And I'm not so sure that the psalmist is just speaking here physically. And I think that's where we read into it. We'd say, well, if that's the case, God's never going to let me fall and hurt myself. I don't believe that's what the psalmist is really speaking of. I think he's even talking deeper, probably spiritually. Will our faith be challenged? Yes. But will we ever lose faith completely? I think that's where he says God intervenes just when we need it the most. He won't let you slip. He won't let you fall. In fact, he watches over you. He doesn't sleep. This is the first time we read here in verse 3 that the Lord watches over us. This psalm keeps building. Most writers would say it kind of stairs steps. It keeps building up, so to speak. Verse 3, the one who watches over you. Verse 4, he watches over Israel. Verse 5, the Lord himself watches over you. Verse 7, the Lord keeps you from all harm. He watches over now your life. And then verse 8, the Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go. So see how it builds? It keeps escalating. It's like a resounding cymbal. And then at the, uh, the end, it's like a big orchestra kicks in. Lord watches over you. He doesn't slumber. Why is that important? Well, God doesn't slumber. Some versions will say he doesn't slumber or sleep. I think Israel, I think the writer of this psalm back then, and if we remember even our passages that we looked at of Elijah last fall, Elijah would call on pagan gods. And they weren't there to answer at that time. And those pagan gods, that those who were following the pagans, Elijah would almost taunt them, saying, well, maybe your God's asleep. Maybe he's busy. Maybe he's attending to someone else. The psalmist here might also be envisioning that. Those pagan gods, 
They're dead. They're made out of wood. They're made out of stone. They are nothing like this God of Israel who is alive. This God of Israel doesn't slumber. He doesn't sleep. He's always active. He is in control. I wish I was that kind of a father. I wish I was that kind of a grandfather. One who never stumbles. One who never falls asleep. I think of our girls, and we had four daughters. They're all now uh, adults. Three of them even with grandchildren for us. I remember the days that our girls, when it was lightning and thundering outside and in the middle of the night, and I'm sure some of those who are listening, you, get, you relate to this. Uh, you'd hear a patter of feet coming down the steps, and, and pretty soon there would be somebody in your bedroom, and sometimes you already heard that, or sometimes you were asleep, and, and you just have that thought of that, somebody standing next to your bed, and, and then you just like that, you wake up out of alertness. And the girls would then camp out around our bed. They might have brought a pillow with them. They might have even brought their blanket. And they'd just say, can you sleep in your bedroom? And we'd just say, you bet, just camp out there. They felt safe. They felt secure. It's thundering outside. It's lightning. The wind might be blowing. And I'll be honest, pretty soon I'd fall asleep too. The psalmist says, though, this God of ours, he's always awake. He doesn't slumber. He doesn't sleep. Indeed, verse 4, he watches over Israel. He never slumbers or sleeps. The Lord watches over you. So today, certainly, we put this into our context. We would say, all right, Lord, we need you to, we need you to watch over us physically. And I think there is some of that here in this psalm. The psalmist says the Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. So physically, the Lord is above us. I think of a protective shade. It can be like an umbrella if it's raining. It can be like the, the ropes on an old tractor that kept the sun from beating on us if we were cultivating corn years ago. Protective shade might be even like if we're lathering ourselves with sunscreen to protect us from getting a sunburn. Those, of course, are, are man-made things. This here is a divine thing. The Lord is your protective shade. I like to think of it as more like a shield, like the armor of faith that we would read about, putting on that full armor, but the armor comes from God, a shield that protects us, a shield that goes before us to keep us from all harm. And, and today, that's what we would pray, right? Lord, protect us from getting this virus. And if we should, Lord, then protect us that it's, it's not so severe. That's what we would pray today. Lord, bring us, bring us back our, our jobs. Protect our families. Those are things that we would pray for. And the psalmist says, the Lord is our shade. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. We think of the sun offering us a new day. Started off saying, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, the moon, sometimes the moon... Uh, for some, in the biblical times, is thought to have offered uh, in darkness. Jesus would talk about that, too. Uh, things that happen in the dark normally aren't very good. But here the psalmist says, whether it's day or whether it's night, God is watching over you. Verse 7 really starts to build along with verse 8. The Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. He watches over your life. Moses in Psalm 90 would talk about the Lord watching over us, and, and he would talk about us. Some of us have years of life, 70 or 80, blessed by God. And then he goes on, teach us to number our days, Lord, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. 
so there's this aspect here of the Lord watching over our, our whole life. Now, how many years do we have? We don't know. But teach us to number our days. Lord, you watch over our life. God's eyes, uh, I've said this before, if, if there was a tape measure pulled out in front of me here this morning, our life is like a pencil dot on that tape measure. In the eyes of God, our lives are just a breath. Here today, as the Bible would say, gone tomorrow. Grass withers, flowers fade, but the word of God stands forever. Verse 8, the Lord keeps watch over you as you come and you go. He keeps track of you. You're coming and you're going. I like that. Our version says the Lord keeps watch over you. I rather like versions that say the Lord keeps track of your coming. That means he's following every footstep. If somebody's tracking you, uh, it gives the idea, okay, now they're even behind you. So once again, this, this psalm speaks like many of them, that it's like the Lord is going ahead of you, he's walking alongside of you, and now he's keeping track of you, he's coming up behind you. And there's guidance in that. I know sometimes you might say, I don't like anybody tracking me down. It makes me uncomfortable. There's other times I love hearing footsteps behind me. I love it when somebody's tracking me. It shows that they care, doesn't it? Not that long ago, I finally figured out my iPhone. Normally, I always have all my location services turned off. I just feel nobody needs to know anything about me. They already kind of know things on my phone that I don't even know about. But I figured out that uh, app that would be uh, allowing my phone to be tracked, but also now Brenda can track me besides. So she goes to the iPad at home. So last fall, I was off to Clara City for a meeting and on my way home, I had my tracking service on, my location service was, were on, and I called Brenda when I was about at Owatonna, and when she picked up the phone, she already knew where I was. She said, you're south of Owatonna already. It's like, yeah, you're tracking me, aren't you? I don't have to call her anymore and say, hey, I'm going to be home in like 15 minutes. She knows right about where I'm at, if I'm now coming through Spring Valley, if I'm on County 14, and she knows when I'm on 9 here just before I hit church. And she does that, not to be nosy, but because she loves me. The same is true in this psalm. The Lord keeps track. He keeps watch over you. You're coming and you're going fully. There's that theme. You're coming. He comes before you, and now he comes after you. And in between, he's watching you over night and day. And with that, I find comfort and peace. We are on a journey today. I'm pretty much, again, I love to stay at home. I'm a homebody. But I tell you, Right now, this is feeling strange for all of us. This is going to perhaps be a, a new norm for a while. But in this, God has this. We're in new territory, but God's with us. We're not alone. He's watching over us in such a way that even another psalm would say, not a hair can fall from my head without the will of my Father in heaven. So as you go forward this coming week, Hold on to the promise of this psalm, which reminds us over and over, he watches, he watches, he watches, he watches, and it builds to the point, he watches over your life, he watches over your coming and your going. Yes, now, present, physically, he's watching over us, but then greater, there's this aspect of spiritually, because our faith is being tested. My faith has been tested this week. I wish I could tell you all I had perfect faith. I don't. I need greater faith in times like this. 
but I know today my faith is stronger than it was yesterday. And I pray that would be true for you as well. So I cling. I hold on this morning to these promises. I'm waiting. And I'm watching. For this Lord who died on the cross, as we build our cross here yet today, each week, I'm clinging to this Christ who died for me. I pray you cling to him as well, that he's holding on to you. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for your love. Thank you that you don't forsake us. You're not leaving us. Uh, when I feel distance from you right now, Lord, it's, it's me who's moved away, not you. So continue to draw us closer. And it is in these times, Lord, that I am drawn closer to you. Adversities do that, Lord. When I'm comfortable, I sit. When I'm uncomfortable, Lord, I'm drawn to you. So again, Father, help us in our faith. As we go through this coming week now, uh, a new week for all of us, what that looks like, we're not sure. Every day something changes. But might that be the same with us? Might we, too, be drawn to be more like you? So, Father, uh, bless our congregation. We pray this in your name. This is a time that we normally would offer our gifts to God, and I pray that you do that differently. Our gifts are, are certainly sometimes, uh, when we think of that financially, and, and we're all strapped right now, many of us are. But also the God-given gifts that he has for us that might be used for his glory. So I pray you'd use those gifts this week as you give to others who are in need, who need help uh, physically, spiritually. In the name of the Lord. We all close our service this morning, and our closing song is We Believe. When all we know is doubt and fear, there's one foundation we believe, we believe. In this time of desperation, when all we know is doubt and fear, there is only one foundation we believe, we believe. In this broken generation, when all is dark, you help us see. There is only one salvation, we believe, we believe. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit. And he's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that he conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. And he's coming back again. We believe. Faith be more than hands comes, greater than the songs we sing. And in our weakness and temptation, we believe, we believe. Father, we believe in Jesus.
Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit, and He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that He conquered death. We believe in the resurrection, and He's coming back again. Let the lost be found and the dead be raised. In the here and now, let love invade. Let the church live love, our God will save. We believe, we believe, and the gates of hell will not prevail. For the power of God has torn the veil. Now we know your love will never fail. We believe, we believe, we believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit. And he's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that he conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. And he's coming back. He's coming back again. He's coming back again. today that perhaps we do feel like we're lost, but we have hope that this love of God who promises to be with us always is here to the end of the age. This we believe. As you go forward this week, you do so in faith. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. We close our service because he lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Blessings on your week. Till we meet again.